Hello Nippies, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Nips, a freelance artist. And today we are going to be, actually before we get into today, I know this is like strange for those of you that I've seen before. I cut my own bangs, I like shave my eyebrows, I iron my hair. So it's giving me very meltdown vibes, all right? So this is what we're doing today though. So, you know, those of, those of you that have been on this channel just go with it, all right? Either way, if you haven't been here or if you've been here before today, we're gonna be working on a process that I get asked about a lot, but I've never got it suggested as a video idea. And so I wanna give a shout out to D Leaper on Instagram because they were the reason right here, they were the reason why I decided to make this video. So thank you, very good suggestion. I, for those of you that have followed me, you guys probably know that I love drawing in traditional sketchbooks, taking a picture of it with like my pencil or my pen or my tool or whatever next to it. And then I'll take that picture into the iPad and then color it digitally. So it almost looks like a digital drawing, but like on a traditional sketchbook, which is, I don't know, I just really like that aesthetic a lot. So a lot of people always ask me about it. And so I decided that this video would be going from beginning to end on that process. So I don't really know how it's gonna turn out. This is what it usually looks like. So I'll go from a traditional drawing that looks like this. And then once it's imported and finished painting, it looks something like this. So either way, this is kind of what the process from beginning, from beginning to end will look like so if that's something that you guys want to watch this is my ipad this is where we're going to transfer all our stuff then just stick around and we'll see what happens So the first thing that I usually do is just get all my materials in one place. My iPad to listen to music and then later draw on. I put my pencil on the side, bring my coffee, my phone, which I use to record. Then I've got my drawer of sketchbooks, pick out the one that I want. And then my other drawer has my materials. I've got my pencil case, my marker case, my little tripod, a mirror so that you can, <laughs> there I am. <laughs> Uh, my mirror so that I can uh, flip my traditional pieces. I've got my little zoom in goggles and my gloves just in case I'm hating my hands that day. So then I go ahead and I place everything where I want it. I start setting up my camera on my handy tripod, which was a gift from a fan. So thank you so much for that. It's super, super handy to just have it right over my working space. I don't always use my phone. Sometimes I use my Canon Rebel. I don't know, depending on the lighting and depending on what I'm filming, sometimes my phone is actually better. I go ahead, open up my sketchbook, and I start picking out my materials for the piece. Now, my materials will vary depending on my mood that day, or sometimes I just go through phases where I just only do pencil sketches. Sometimes I'll do only color pencil, sometimes I'll do brush pens, so it really depends on what's happening in my life at the time. Right now, I'm still on my general pencils with my blending sticks uh, phase, and so those are the materials that I take out. These materials are in my Amazon shop down below if you guys want to see what I exactly what I use. And it comes with a commission for myself, so it does help me if you purchase from my Amazon shop. But those are the exact materials that I use. Then I set up my iPad with my favorite playlist at the moment, which is my K Music playlist. I'll go ahead and I'll put a link to that down below if that's something that you guys like to listen to. And then I go ahead, open up my AirPods, sync them up, put them on, and just get ready to work. Now, when I normally do sketches on my in my sketchbook, I try my best to just draw stream of consciousness. Obviously, there are times where I have a general idea or a general composition idea, maybe a theme, a specific character I wanna draw. But for a lot of these, especially sketch -a days where I'm drawing so frequently, I try my best to just draw the first thing that comes to mind because it's the least stressful thing that I can figure to do.
Here you'll see me kind of just go with the flow. The only thing that I did have an idea of for this drawing was that I knew I wanted a character with hands on their face. That was pretty much all I had in my mind. And so I kind of just started drawing hands and I put a face in there and just went with the flow. I had no idea how this piece was gonna look. And if I know that I'm going to color a piece on the iPad, sometimes I do have an issue where I'll be a little extra sloppy because I know I can fix it later, which I try to, which is not ideal. Ideally, my favorite aesthetic for the digital traditional hybrid drawings is that the, the traditional lines or the traditional part of the drawing really sticks out and is very clean and I almost don't have to quote unquote fix too much of it. And so if my sketches get a little too messy, then the drawing looks almost entirely digital. Sometimes you'll see me do kind of like two sketches, which I do on Photoshop, but traditionally what I'll do is like, I'll do an initial sketch and then I'll use my netted eraser and kind of roll it over the sketch so it lightens it up. And then I'll do a second iteration of it that looks a little bit cleaner than the first. You'll see here that a lot of the stuff that I'm drawing isn't really like set in stone. When I sketch, a lot of it is just shapes and scribbles. Like I promise I really don't know what I'm doing half the time. I'm just kind of throwing things around and hoping that it works. And so here you'll see me do the netted eraser. I roll it up and just kind of whoop, just glide it over my picture, lower the opacity a bit, and then go over with a darker layer of the pencil. Right now, I am still working on finishing this sketchbook, and so a lot of the recent sketches that I've posted are with this sketchbook that has the dots. And a lot of people have asked me, are the dots helpful? My answer is not really. For me particularly, it depends on what you use the sketchbook for. Everybody will use it for different things. I like it because it, it's aesthetic to me and it looks really pretty in the finished drawings. It's just a really cute touch. There are some times where it does help me kind of like when I do perspective studies or when I want to do like a shape behind my character. It helps having the the dots to kind of guide me to make straight lines and even shapes. I don't particularly use it for that. I know people who do grids and a lot of like geometrical kind of shapes and patterns will probably make more use out of it. But for me, it's mainly just aesthetic purposes. You can pretty much turn any digital, any traditional drawing into a digital one. Now, when I say this, I know that there are people who scan their traditional drawings and then finish them off digitally. The whole point of this video is not necessarily to cover that aspect of going from traditional to digital. It's more so of the quote unquote illusion of a traditional drawing, but with digital finishing touches, I guess you could say. So when you, scan a, a traditional drawing, hopefully the scan is good enough that if you were to continue it digitally, you kind of wouldn't be able to tell. Like it just looks like a finished digital drawing. With these, what happens is that what I'm coloring digitally isn't a scan of the traditional drawing, it's a picture of the traditional drawing. And it's not a picture of just the drawing, it's a picture of the drawing in its surroundings that tie it to the physical world, if that makes any sense. So I'm taking a picture of my traditional drawing in a sketchbook with like a pencil or like a marker, an eraser, etc. And so what I'm doing is that I'm taking that that picture and then drawing on top of that so that the finished product looks like a digital drawing 
on a sketchbook. So it's a very like specific sect of traditional into digital work. Hopefully that made some sense. There are some things that I know I will get to fix digitally, and so I try not to worry too much. I think the hands, hand sizes, hand proportions, and kind of like just the weight of them was one thing I was kind of concerned about, but I knew that once I got into digital, it's very easy to, especially if you're working on a sketch and not something super refined, you can pretty much pull off anything with the right amount of colors and lines here and there. Things that are just very loose and fun is kind of all about the general vibe and not necessarily too much about the details, at least for me. If I can make sure that the vibe and that the mood and the flow of the drawing is generally good, I think a lot of the details don't matter too much. So I try not to stress too much about the, the things like the hand proportions, maybe like flipping the drawing, which I didn't do too much here because I didn't want to take the, the sketchbook off camera. So I think at one point in this speed paint, I, I bring the mirror on top like I put it on top where the phone was recording. So, and then I looked under so that I could basically mirror it. And it wasn't too great, but I knew that anything that needed to be fixed could be fixed digitally. Here you just see me finishing up with adding just extra little details to balance out the picture, maybe finishing up with altering the line weights, just making certain things darker so that when I bring it into digital, I don't need to add too much to the digital drawing and you can still see the traditional sketch lines come through. Here is the finished piece, some zoom ins of the pencil work. I'm pretty proud of this piece, even with how messy it is and how uh, unfinished it looks. The next thing I do is I take a picture of it. I set my ratio to a square, so one to one. And I make sure that my sketchbook, if that's my traditional medium, is on some really nice background. I try to include one drawing material, at least that just looks nice with the current scheme or what I think the color scheme is gonna be later. So then here you see me airdrop it into my iPad and then on Procreate on the top right, you can press photo and it'll just import the photo for you. So I go ahead, I pick my favorite one. You see at the bottom, all the other drawings that I've done this with. Here's a comparison of what it looks like on my phone and on the iPad ready to go. So the next thing I do is now set up to record the iPad. This is the first time I've ever done this. I've seen other artists do this with their iPads and I never thought it would work because I just don't understand how they get it to look so beautiful while you're recording a screen, but not within the screen, like you're recording the screen with a phone. You guys will see how great it looks and I honestly was just so surprised that it even looked this clear. Normally I just use the Procreate function, the built-in Procreate function with the speed paint recording. So the first thing that I do is I duplicate the layer and I set it to multiply. For this piece specifically, I took the picture so well I didn't really need to edit the picture. If you go up into the settings and you change the curves or the contrast or any of that to get a better resolution or get your traditional lines to look better then you might need to do that. But for this one, I just went ahead and I duplicated it, set it to multiply. So for me, the colors and kind of how they all come together in the flats 
make it much easier to continue with the rest of the drawing. If I know that the colors look kind of nice without any shadows and everything all just put together, then I feel more comfortable moving forward with like some shadows, some cool lights. Honestly, sometimes the drawing will take a turn for the, for the best and sometimes it'll just be for the worst and I'll just ruin the lines that I started with. So I don't know, it's all very stream of consciousness, very go with the flow. I try my best to not add too much pressure when I work on these and try not to add too many expectations. The whole point of these is to be very loose, very fun, very experimental, do things that I'm not used to. You see me adding some shadows here, also on a multiply layer, and I added some gradients to my existing colors, mess with the multiply layer shadows by making them darker or lighter. Here's one big thing that makes the traditional to digital piece really pop out of your sketchbook or whatever traditional medium you decided to go with for this kind of hybrid is accenting your line art. So if you have line art, but just making it really pop out of the page that kind of gives a hint that it's digital. Sometimes some of the colors, if you set the, the layer to multiply, the original picture layer to multiply, you can obviously try different layer settings. I like multiply, but sometimes it'll pick up, it'll just pick up the texture. And so it just looks like you took a really good picture of traditional paints. Sometimes, at least for me, going over the lines and making them very dark and just like, I don't even know how to explain it. It just makes it pop off the page. So I don't go over all of them. I just kind of accent wherever I want my attention to be drawn. And it really makes the whole drawing kind of come to life. You'll see me kind of go over with some black, add some really bright highlights. And now I just start adding the finishing touches. I probably should have done a more slow, in-depth tutorial on the mechanics. I feel like this is not a very technical, friendly tutorial. This is more of like a walkthrough of what I do, but it's not, well, not even a walkthrough. This is not as in-depth as I'd like it to be. Like it doesn't really go over the layers on Procreate or what exactly I do per se. So yeah. I go ahead and I start adding a little fun background color to my drawing. I usually don't have backgrounds and so adding a nice solid color and a cool shape will sometimes just make the sketch a little bit more dynamic and have more life and fills out the composition. And then I went in with some effects. I added a glitch effect to the background as well to give it that cool kind of painter-y distorted feel. Adding more highlights, added a chromatic aberration, gave it that cool techie vibe. See my broken Procreate pen hanging on by a thread. This is what the finished piece looks like on my iPad. Probably not the clearest image, but I really had a lot of fun with this one. This is the pencil one in comparison. It's what they look like side by side. Yeah, that is how I usually bring my traditional pieces into a digital hybrid illustration situation. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you again to D Leaper for suggesting this video. I know I did not answer as many questions as I could have, but this is my process and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, join the Nippy family, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. If you guys want a more in-depth break down of what I do, then let me know down below and I will see you guys next video.